Hi, welcome back to 5am Coffee with Grady. Today's episode we're going to be talking about caffeine in a new series I'm going to call Behind Coffee. This episode we're going to go in depth into how caffeine from coffee keeps your body awake. You're probably already aware that coffee keeps you awake because of caffeine. But how does caffeine actually work? Well, the science behind it is more complicated than I initially thought, which made this video really hard to put together. So if you like this content and want to see more videos like it, make sure to like and subscribe. Now, back to caffeine. To understand the effects of caffeine on the brain, first we have to understand why your body gets sleepy. As you go throughout your day, your body uses energy in the form of ATP, especially in your brain where your neurons fire cells to each other. A crucial part of ATP is adenosine. Adenosine is a lingot that helps you go to bed. But it's not as easy as turning off and on a switch in your brain. If only there was some way for us to travel inside the brain and look at what's happening. Wait, whoa, what's happening? What's going on? Where am I? You're in your brain, Grady. Wow, that's crazy. Why does it look like a whiteboard? Shh, don't worry about it. Okay. Now, in our brain, we have specialized cells called nerve cells. This is what a nerve cell looks like. There's the body or the soma of the cell and the squiggly things coming out of the soma are dendrites. This is where the neuron receives chemical messages. The tube coming out of the soma is called the axon. The action potential travels down the axon to the terminal buttons where the neurotransmitters are then relayed to different neurons. Fun fact, did you know neurons are never touching for neurotransmitters to get relayed to another neuron, they have to travel through the synapse. These specialized cells make electrical impulses and fire signals that tell our body what to do. But in order to do this, they need neurotransmitters, like adenosine. First, adenosine must travel out of the cell membrane through adenosine nucleoside transporters. When adenosine is traveling through the synapse, it may come across an adenosine receptor. This type of cell signaling is called synaptic signaling. This is where neurotransmitters or other messengers travel through the synapse to relay messages. The two adenosine receptors we're going to focus on are the A1 and the A2 receptors. The A1 receptor activates the G1 protein, and the A2 receptor activates the G2 protein. The G1 protein reduces neuron activity, while the G2 protein initiates sleep. Both these proteins initiate the adenylate cyclase, which turns ATP into CAMP. With the presence of CAMP, the inactive protein kinase will become active. With the activation of the protein kinase, it will now transfer phosphate from ATP to the CA2 positive protein channel. This allows calcium ions to enter the membrane and potassium ions to leave. Remember how I said the neurons fire signals? Well, in this case, the signal travels across the neuron and the final result is reduced brain activity and sleepiness. That's great and all, but how does caffeine play into this? Well, the caffeine molecules look a lot like the adenosine molecules, enough so that caffeine is able to bind with the adenosine receptors. However, caffeine does not activate these receptors. Therefore, your body doesn't go through all the processes of getting tired. This is known as a competitory inhibitor. However, your body is very good at adapting. To combat this, your cells make more adenosine receptors and produce more adenosine, which means you have to drink more coffee to have more caffeine in your system to stay awake. Well, would you look at the time? It looks like I have to get back to drinking my coffee. 
Whoa. That was crazy. If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed what ever happened. And until next time, this has been 5am Coffee with Grady.